Let's imagine I'm a developer. The first thing I want to do is work on a pull request that someone else created. I'm in GitHub for this demo, but the flow would be the same in GitLab and Bitbucket. Now, traditionally, I would check out the code and set up the various tools I need in order to do the review. With this code, that would include things like Python, Docker, NPM, a compiler, my IDE, the list goes on and on. With Gitpod, all I need to do is click on this button. Amazing, right? Gitpod takes the pull request and sets everything up I need automatically. Once it opens, I've got a fully running application and complete dev environment that includes everything I need to work on this pull request. Notice how the code had already been compiled and dependencies downloaded when the dev environment opened. That's because of Gitpod's pre-builds. Think of it as a CI system, but for dev environments. When a code change happens, Gitpod recognizes the change and pre-builds some aspects of that environment for the engineer. Jan can download the internet before the engineer even opens the workspace. This saves a ton of time. And I promise, this is magic. But how does all of this get created? There is a YAML file that lives alongside the source code. Traditionally, this would be an outdated readme that an engineer would manually execute. So think of this YAML file as replacing that with a machine-readable version. When you sign up with Gitpod and open a repository that doesn't have such a YAML file yet, Gitpod infers one for you. The team can then edit and commit it alongside the code, making it a part of the source code, just like a CI definition would be. In that file, the team can provide tools that must be pr available by providing a Docker image. For example, these tasks let you curate what happens when a workspace opens, or even as part of the pre-build. Now, let's take a look at what happened in this pull request. I can see the changes that were made, inspect the code, and work on it. Even cooler, I can work with a pull request without changing the state of whatever else it is that I'm working on. It's amazing. I can have multiple workspaces open in different tabs. Each environment is totally contained and doesn't interfere with any other one. On any given day, most engineers will have three or four workspaces running in parallel. Another feature that solves a fairly widespread problem is sharing. Let's pretend I have a question about this pull request I need to ask the author for an explanation. Gitpod lets me share my workspace with others using a simple click. I send it to them, and boom, that person has access to the exact same environment and is able to interact with all of the same services. They can browse, interact with terminals, everything. And it's visible simultaneously across both sessions. Now, running top probably isn't what I do, but it does a great job at showcasing this. Think of it as instantaneous pair programming without lifting a finger. Finally, let's look at the admin UI. This is where any member of your company here will go to start their day or administer users. The members page is where we have a list of all users in the organization, along with their status as member or owner. The workspaces list showcases a list of workspaces currently running. These are your personal workspaces. And it's super easy to configure and interact with any given workspace. We often get asked, can I go back to all workspaces? And yes, of course. Workspaces are rendered inactive after 24 hours, but can be re-enabled with a click of a button. Engineers can also start workspaces from within this UI. By doing it here, they can select for specific things, such as the IDE they want to use, or the resources they need. And that's it. 
What else can I help to answer?